Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Introduction to Statistics and Asking Statistical Questions, Part 1. So in the beginning here, we'd like to get an introduction to this entire branch of math that we call statistics. We're going to talk about what it is, why we care about statistics, and then in the remainder of the lesson, we're going to focus on asking statistical questions. In other words, by the end of this lesson, you will understand when and what types of questions require us to use this thing called statistics and when other situations may not require statistics at all. all right? So in general, what is statistics? It has a fancy sounding name, complicated sounding name, but I promise you it's very simple to understand. Okay, Take two situations. Let's say I have three people in this room and I say, hey guys or girls, what are your ages? What are the ages of these three people in the room? Well, pretty easy. The person will just, each person will tell me each of their ages and I'll have three numbers, the age for each of those three people. So that's something I can easily go get the information for. I can easily ask those three people what their ages are uh, and then I can get the information. The data is what we call it, the numbers that come back, right? So easy. So that is not statistics because it's just three people. I can easily just go get all of the information and I will know everything about their ages. So that's not statistics, right? But here's a statistical type of question. Let's say I have a million people. Let's say I have all the people in, 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 a, uh, in one of the states of the United States, right? Like a million people or two or five million people. And I want to know what are their ages, right? I can't really go figure that out, right? Because the population, that's a word we're going to use a lot, the population of what I am trying to study is much, much bigger. It's like a million people, right? So when we have a large amount of people, the number of people or the number of items we're studying, we call it the population. When I only had three people in my room, the population was only three people, right? So it's easy to just get the info. But when my population is a million people or 50 million people and I want to know their ages, it's not possible for me to ask everybody their age. I just can't. I will spend years and years figuring that, that information out and then more people will be born anyway and I'll never really figure the information out. So we have to use statistics because we cannot ask 50 million people what their ages really are practically. So what we do is we consider the population, the whole group of 50 million people, People, and we choose to, to sample that population, to go and look into that population and maybe only ask a thousand people or 5,000 people, some large number, but not a gigantic number of people. We call that sampling the population. So the population is a large amount of people, the entire totality of everything we really want to know. But in statistics, we have to use the methods of statistics when we really cannot ask everybody the information. So we instead create a smaller subset of people we call the sample and we're going to go sample the information. We may ask 5,000 people their ages, and then we have to figure out how to present that information to make sense. So what you might do is you might go create a graph of the 5,000 people and try to understand what's happening uh, for the population by just looking at that small sample in a graph. Or we might take the mean or the average, which is to take and, and calculate a, a kind of the, the middle of the road number that represents that sample, right? And so we have this idea in statistics where you know it's a statistical question when the amount of people that you're trying to, to learn about is just far too big for you to actually just go get the information, right? So we instead sample a small amount. Let's take another quick example. Let's say you work in a pencil factory and you're making pencils. Now the machine should spit pencils out of a, of a, of a, of a, of a certain length that you're trying to to make the pencils. Or if you're in a pizza factory, you're making these circular pizzas, the pizza should be all the same size coming out, but you want to check it. You want to test it, right? But your pizza factory makes like 6 million pizzas a month, right? You cannot measure 6 million pizzas. It's just not practical. You're not going to be able to do it. So instead what we do is we take a small group of pizzas. Maybe we randomly sample maybe only 300 pizzas a week and we measure them. And then we have to figure out how to look at that smaller sample and try to figure out from that smaller piece of information what the population of pizzas, the all of the pizzas in other words, really are doing. So the bottom line is if your uh, uh, if your thing you're studying is only a few people or a handful of people and it's possible to go get all the information, it's generally not a statistical question. But if you're sampling something or if you're studying something that's large, like the number of stars in our galaxy, then it's a statistical thing. You try to learn about the population by taking a small subset called a sample and studying it. And in this set of lessons, we're going to learn how to do that and how do we take that information and try to 
to learn what we can from it to understand what the population is doing. All right. And I'll just say briefly before we get going in the, in the rest of the lesson here, two of the main ways that we try to learn what the actual information, in, what the actual population is doing is when we take a look at our sample, we look at two ideas about that guy. We have a list of numbers, right? We generally want to find what the center of the data looks like. So we have lots of numbers. We try to figure out where is the center of the, the data and also the spread of the data, how spread uh, apart it is. So for instance, we're going to get to this later, but let's say you had, you know, 100,000 people you wanted to, to determine their average age, right? Some are adults, some are you know, teenagers, some are children, right? But there's 100,000 people. You cannot ask 100,000 people in a reasonable amount of time what all of their ages are. It's not going to work. So instead, you sample them. You maybe ask 500 people. You can do that in a few days, probably. 500 people. And you ask what their ages are. But now you have 500 numbers. So how do you really learn something from 500 numbers? You can't just make a table of 500 numbers. That's not going to be helpful. We have to boil it down to understand what uh, the numbers are telling us. So we want to figure out the average or the center value of their age. We find their average age, right? That's one important number but we also want to find the spread of the ages. In other words, how far apart around the average value are those ages? If there's a lot of little kids, then we're going to have lots of data way far away from the average value because we're going to have one and two year olds, or maybe 99 and 100 year olds, or maybe our population has all of the ages that are clustered, maybe around 25 years old. Let's say we happen to ask a bunch of people in their 20s, you know, they're the age, then the average value would be in the 20s and the spread of the data would be really tight. It would be all clustered around 20s. So I guess what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is that when you're, you're trying to study large amounts of data, you have to sample a smaller subset of the data. And we try to take that sample that we have, all those numbers, and boil it down to something that we can draw conclusions from. The two ways we do that generally is to try to find where the center of the data is, like an average value, but we'll talk more about that later. And also, how spread is the data? Are all of the ages or the lengths of the pencils or the size of the pizzas, are they all clustered very close to the average value? Or do we have outliers where some are just all over the place, very far away from the average value? So the center and the spread of the data are extremely important in statistics. And that really is most of what we do in statistics, figuring out how to measure the center of a data set and also trying to figure out how to, how to figure out how far apart and spread out that data is, right? So here we're going to get to our actual questions. I'm going to read a, uh, a sentence to you and we're going to decide together, is it a statistical question or is it not a statistical question? You'll see how it works as we move along here. Let's say problem number one, it says, how tall is Joshua's father? How tall is Joshua's father? Is that a statistical question or not a statistical question? Well, we're only asking the, the height of one person. It's Joshua's father. I can literally walk over to Joshua's father and say, how tall are you? And he'll tell me, and I have the information. There is no statistics there because it's just one guy and I go over and I ask him his height and he tells me, and that's it. It's easy to do. I know exactly the answer. It is not statistic. I don't have to sample a large amount of people to get any information, just one person. So that one is not statistical. All right, let's take a look at another problem. How about how many people are in my classroom? So I'm sitting in class, I have chairs around us. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people in the room, but it's very easy for me to just count one, two, three, four, five. I don't have to, to sample a large amount of like a million people. I just look around, there's probably 20 or 30, maybe 50 people in the room, I just count them. Very simple and I will know the answer. I will know everything I, I need to know about that answer because I've counted every single person in the room because it's easy to do. So that is not a statistical question. If I wanna know how many people are in my classroom, it's not a statistical question because I can go get all the information easily. Now let's take a look at the next problem. What is the minimum salary of teachers in North America, right? What if you were asking yourself the question, what's the minimum salary of teachers in North America? How would you actually figure that out in real life, right? Well, first of all, you'd have to go and look in North America, which is hundreds of millions of people, right? And then you would have to figure out how many teachers are in that, that population of North America. And you're gonna have a, a smaller population of teachers 
in North America. I don't know, maybe it's a million people or something. It's, it's, it's got to be a lot of people, maybe hundreds of thousands of people, right? And then you would have to go ask them, what is uh, the, the, their salary, right? You would have to ask everybody's salary. And then you would have to find like the smallest number of all the salaries you asked, and that would be like the smallest salary of a teacher in North America. But you see, it's impossible to do that. There's no way that I would be able to ask a million people in a timely fashion to really figure out what their salary is. So that is not, uh, I'm sorry, that is a statistical question because it's impossible in practice to go ask everybody their salary and figure out what the minimum value is. I would have to go and choose maybe a thousand or two or three thousand people. I would have to ask those people. I would have to find that minimum salary. And then I would have, have to make the assumption that the information I got from my small sample is representative of the whole population of a million teachers in North America. So you would have to be using conclusions from your sample to learn about the population of all teachers, right? Right? So that is a statistical question, right? All right, let's take a look at the next question. What is the average age of students at a community college? The average age of students at a community college, right? Now this one, you could go either way. You probably could ask everybody at a community college what their age is. But in reality, it's gonna be really difficult to do. Why? Because how are you gonna physically ask everybody? Everybody is not on campus at the same time. You're not gonna be able to get everybody in a room to really ask everybody. On the day that you try to ask everybody, some people are gonna be sick, they're gonna be home. Maybe they're not in class that day, maybe they're at work. So if you, even if you do it over a period of a week or two, you're not gonna catch every single person on campus. So you're really not gonna be able to ask every single person at that community college. You have to choose a small sample and ask uh, the average age of those students, and then from that, you would infer that the that that's representative of the whole population. So that's a statistical question. All right, next question. What is the range of hibernation duration of brown bears? Brown bears. So if you were a scientist and you were trying to figure out how long do brown bears hibernate, you would want to figure out the range of hibernation. Is it three days? Is it 17 days? Is it 15 days? What's the range, right? So then you would have to go figure out how to study all those brown bears. But it's again, impossible to go find all the brown bears. You can't do it. Even if you wanted to, even if you had millions of dollars, you were never gonna find every brown bear. It's not gonna happen. So what you would do instead is you would go find 10 or 20 or 50 brown bears and study them. And then you would say, well, I think these 50 brown bears are pretty similar to probably the whole population of brown bears and you would use it to draw a conclusion. That is a statistical question, right? Here's our final question. Does Pamela weigh more than Sam, right? What if you really wanted to figure out, Pamela, do you weigh more than Sam or not? What would you do? You would take Pamela to the scale, you'd weigh her, and then you would take Sam to the scale and weigh him, and you'd figure out who was more. There's no statistics there. You have all the information from those two people. So I'm hoping, and, and so that means this is not statistical, just to make sure you understand. So the driving conclusion of this whole thing is that we use statistics when it's really impractical to collect all the information of what you're trying to study. You're trying to study all the goldfish in, 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 a, in, in a giant lake. Well, you can't. You're not gonna be able to get them all. So you study a small sample and try to draw conclusions from that small sample. So if we just race through these six again, we'll just drill it home here. Minimum salary of teachers in North America, that was statistical. I cannot sample every teacher in North America. So I have to find a subset and draw conclusions. That's why it's statistical. How tall is Joshua's father? One data point, one person, easy to do, that is not statistical. How many people are in my class? I can sit here and count, I can count everybody around me, easy to do, that is not statistical. Average age of students at a community college, I'm not gonna be able to collect info on everybody in campus. I should just then take a smaller group of students and draw conclusions from that, that is statistical. The range of hibernation of brown bears, can't study all the brown bears, never gonna happen. It is a statistical question, I should then choose a few families of brown bears, study them, and draw conclusions from that. And then finally, does Pamela weigh more than Sam? It's just two numbers, I can easily get them. And so that is is not a statistical question. So that brings us full circle to what is the concept of statistics. We generally have a large population of people. Maybe I'm trying to figure out the average life expectancy, that means how old you are when you die, of let's say uh, people that live in a, on a certain island or in Australia somewhere with millions of people, right? Well, 
I want to check out their life expectancy, but I can't really go and interview everybody. I must use statistics. And in statistics, we take a smaller group of people, something I can manage, like 200 people, and I study those people. And then we make the conclusion, we say, or we hope, if we've done our job right, that the conclusion we draw from the small group of people also applies to the global population. So you have the population, the total amount of people I care about, and the sample, which is the small group of people that I study. And then in the rest of these lessons, we're generally going to be focusing on two main things when we study our data. We're going to be trying to figure out where the center of the data is. We can use an average for that, also called the mean. We'll talk about that later. We have other ways of studying the center, but we want to figure out where the center value of the data roughly is. And the second thing is, how spread apart is that data? Is all of the data clustered around the mean? Like if all the ages of the people were very close to the mean, uh, there we would say it was a very uh, small amount of spread. Or is the data very spread, art, uh, spread uh, 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 apart about the mean? Like if you had grades in a classroom and the average grade was an 80. If we had a large spread, then some of the data would be way down here at 30 and 40, and some would be over here at 99 and 100. The data would be spread out far about the average value. But if the data was not spread so much and the average was 80, then all the grades would be clustered somewhere around 80. So the average value, very important. How spread apart the data is, is the second thing that we study, also very important. So center of the data, spread of the data. It is really, in the global sense, the two most important things that we ever study in statistics. So I'd like you to go over this, make sure you understand all of these concepts of population, samples, and data, and asking statistical questions. Follow me on to part two. We'll continue building your skills.